Hello everybody. Oh, I've been missing up on the videos. It's been crazy around here. So much stuff going on. I can't even... Oh, I got so much stuff to fill you in on. There's going to be new products, uh, moving. Um, what else? Lucy's here doing ear flap flaps in the background. I'm just recording through my headset right now. I hope it sounds okay. Oh my God. I think I have about three or four videos to drop. So it'll be one a day, if not two a day. Yes, but let's start with this. Let's let's back up to Monday. I know it's Wednesday, but we're gonna we're gonna pretend it's Monday, and I'm gonna start popping videos. Pop pop pop. So chapter eight, chapter seven was all about gratitude. Your attitude determines your gratitude. But now we're doing the manifesting with chapter eight, and I'm shaking the crap out of my camera here. Hey, if you're new here, don't forget hit like, share, subscribe. Utterances and comments of dis yes, utterances of discontent will be met with love and humor. That's how it goes. And don't forget to share these videos. So we're going chapter by chapter with this book. I can't wait till we start on our next book. Put some suggestions down below. They're all going to be new thought movement. I'm thinking Neville Goddard next time. Maybe Florence Scovel Shin. Love her. Um, but right now we're doing Wallace Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich. If you haven't seen the other seven chapters, <laughs> my dog is trying to get under the desk. So she's making loud noises. Um, if you haven't seen the other seven chapters, go down uh scroll through and i do have a manifesting playlist they'll be in there okay so i'm just going to read this to you i might be a little bit off camera let me see if i can tilt this here i might be a little bit off camera just so i can read because i i have the old people vision okay chapter eight thinking in a certain way turn back to chapter six and read again the story of the man who formed a mental image of his house and you will get a fair idea of the initial step towards getting rich you must form a clear and definite mental picture of what you want. You cannot transmit the idea unless you have it yourself. I did this today. I, um, that manifesting hypnosis, if you haven't listened to that, please listen to it with the getting in a balloon, a hot air balloon and going up and down and going to a carnival. You, it helps to have that kind of background. And then what you do is you put the mental pictures in that and it, it really helps cement your images some people do it with scripting i also teach scripting i'm happy to do that um, i'm just going to tilt the camera a little bit more um we can do that scripting or the mental imaging but yeah he's correct you have to know what you want in order to manifest it you must have it before you can give it and many people fail to impress the thinking substance because they have themselves only a vague and misty concept of the things they want to do to have or to become it is not enough that you should have a general desire for wealth to do good with everybody has that desire it is not enough that you should have a wish to travel see things live more etc everybody has those desires if you were going to send a wireless message to a friend now this was written 110 years ago so wireless messages were crazy uh, you would not send the letters of the alphabet in their order and let him construct the message for himself nor would you take the words at random from the dictionary you would send a coherent sentence one that one which meant something. I don't know. If you read people's text messages nowadays, I don't know. What is it? Um, you can't put punctuation now because it's aggressive. Yeah. Anyway, when you try to impress your wants upon substance, remember that it must be done by a coherent statement. You must know what you want and be definite. You can never get rich or start the creative power into action by sending out unformed longings and vague desires. Hold on. Hold on. I think I'm, I'm going to find up. There's a book right behind me. Give me one second. Ugh, I got to go off. I'm going to go off here for a millisecond. I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Okay. Is this it? Okay. That's one of them. Hang on. I'm coming back. Okay. Okay. I had to, I had to get my chair across the room here. Exactly what he's talking about are called thought forms. This is, these are very old books that I found in a um, bookstore in Fayetteville, Arkansas, up near Eureka Springs. And I found these at uh, the Dixon Street Book Store. These are thought forms. This, this book is very old. I think it was originally written, first published in 1901. So uh, even older than this. Um, and this was another one, but it talks about what he's saying is when you, these were written way before the science proved it. When you have a thought, it becomes an actual thing. It actually condenses in, in physics. It condenses into matter. 
So it is, it becomes a thing, not just a, you know, uh, you think when you have a thought, it, it goes nowhere. But that energy actually does go somewhere. So, da, 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 where we go? Where did I leave off? I don't even know. Okay. Go over your desires just as the man I have described went over his house. See just what you want and get a clear mental picture of it as you wish for it to look when you get it. That clear mental picture you must have continually in mind as the sailor has in mind the port toward which he is sailing his ship. You must keep your face toward it at all times. You must no more lose sight of it than a steerman, steersman lose sight of a compass. It is not necessary to take exercises in concentration, nor to set apart special times for prayer or affirmations, nor to go into the silence, nor do any occult stunts of any kind. Well, uh, here, Mama Delia, we love occult stunts, don't we? Candles and such. I, uh, I love occult stunts, to be honest with you. Um, uh, there, are, uh, there are things are well enough but all you need to know is what you want and to want it badly enough so that it will stay in your sights. Spend as much of your leisure time as you can in contemplating your picture, but no one needs to take exercises to concentrate his mind on a thing which he really wants. I don't know. With all these cell phones and stuff nowadays, I need to, concent I need to exercise my concentration. It is the things you do not really care about which require effort to fix your attention upon them. And unless you really want to get rich so that the desire is strong enough to hold your thoughts directed into the purpose as the magnetic pole holds the needle of the compass. It will hardly be worthwhile for you to carry out the instructions given in this book, to try to carry out the instructions given in this book. The methods herein set forth are for people who desire for riches, whose, I'm sorry, whose desire for riches is strong enough to overcome mental laziness and the love of ease and make them work. The more clear and definite you make your picture, then the more you dwell upon it, bringing out all of its delightful details, the stronger your desire will be and the stronger your desire and the easier it will be to hold your mind fixed upon the picture of what you want. Let's see. Oh, that was a short chapter. Something more is necessary, however, than merely to see the picture clearly. If that is all you do, you are only a dreamer and will have little or no power for accomplishment. Behind your clear vision must be the purpose to realize it, to bring it out into tangible expression. And behind this purpose must be an invincible and unwavering faith that the thing is already yours, that it is at hand, and if you have only to take possession of it. Live in the new house, mentally, until it takes a form around you physically. In the mental realm, enter at once into full enjoyment of the things you want. Whatsoever things ye ask for when ye pray, believe, and ye receive them, and ye shall have them, said Jesus. A lot of yees. Uh, see the things ye want as if they were actually around you at all times. See yourself as owning and using them. Make use of them in imagination just as you will make use of them when they are your tangible possessions. Dwell upon your mental picture until it is clear and distinct, and then take the mental attitude of ownership towards everything in that picture. Take possession of it in mind and in the full faith that it is actually yours. Hold on to its mental ownership. Do not waver for an instant in the faith that it is real. And remember what was said in the preceding chapter about gratitude. Be as thankful for it all the time as you expect to be when it has taken form. Um, I do this with grat uh, if you guys have uh, talked to me at all about doing gratitudes or doing like the journaling. I always journal three things that I am grateful for in the morning. Every, every day I do three gratitudes and I do what I call one future gratitude. And that's a, that's something that hasn't taken place yet. So let's say I am grateful for having a billion dollars. I'm grateful for being a billionaire. So I'm not a billionaire, but I can, if I'm grateful for it, more likely to come to me. Okay. Okay. The man who can sincerely say, Thank God for the things he has, which he has yet to own only in imagination has real faith. He will get rich. He will cause the creation of whatsoever he wants. You do not need to pray repeatedly for things you want. It is not necessary to tell God about it every day. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, said Jesus to his pupils, for your father knoweth that ye have need of these things before ye ask him. Your part is to intelligently formulate your desires for the things which make for a larger life and to get these and to get these 
And to get these, desire arranged into a coherent whole. That's a weird sentence. And then to impress this whole desire upon the formless substance, which has the power and will bring it to you, will bring to you what you want. You do not make this impression by repeating a string of words. You make it by holding the vision with unshakable purpose to attain it and with steadfast faith that you do attain it. The answer to prayer is not according to your faith while you are talking, but according to your faith while you are working. You cannot impress the mind of God by having a special Sabbath day set apart to tell him what you want and then forgetting him during the rest of the week. You cannot impress him by having special hours to go to your closet and pray if you then dismiss the matter from your mind until the hour of prayer comes again. Oral prayer is well enough, but it is if but its effect, especially upon yourself in clarifying your vision and strengthening your faith, but it is not your oral petitions which get you what you want. In order to get rich, you need not a sweet hour of prayer. You need to pray without ceasing. And by prayer, I mean holding steadily to your vision with the purpose to cause its creation into solid form and the faith that you are doing so. Believe that ye receive them. The whole matter turns on receiving. Once you have clearly formed your vision, when you have formed it, it is well to make an oral statement addressing the supreme and reverent prayer in the form that moment you must, in mind, receive what you ask for. These are some difficult sentences. I, I hope you guys are staying with me here. Live in the new house, wear the fine clothes, ride in the automobile, Go on the journey and confidently plan for greater journeys. Think and speak of all the things you have asked for in terms of actual present ownership. Imagine an environment and, in, and a financial condition exactly as you want them and live all the time in that imaginary environment and financial condition. Mind, however, you do not do this as a mere dreamer and castle builder. Hold on to the faith that the imagery is being realized and the purpose to realize it. Remember that it is faith and purpose in the use of imagination which makes the difference between the scientist and the dreamer. And having learned this fact, it is here that you must learn the proper use of will. Oh, so that's chapter nine. So stay tuned. I might actually do an extra chapter this week since I didn't, uh, I was a little late on the, the Monday manifesting. So maybe we'll do chapter nine too. We'll see. So thank you guys for hanging in there. Don't forget to, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll be back with more manifesting, more magic, more makeup videos for you.